Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of I Have a Testimony. I'm your host, Brother Willie Muhammad. God came to us to seek and to save that which was lost. He raised the man from among us. He, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, laid the foundation. What I'm doing is something that comes from him through me and the thing that he uses in me to do the work is my faith in him and the word that he taught to produce men and women who wanted to clean up their life and build an independent nation for the glory of God. Today, brothers and sisters, we are here to hear from some of the sisters who had the opportunity to travel, study, and learn from Mother Tanetta Muhammad, a wife of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They will share with us what they have learned from her travels, her scholarship, and the cultural revolution that she discusses in her weekly column in the Final Call newspaper titled, The Unveiling of the Number 19. And he saw that we would be in diplomatic groups that we would be in parliamentary uh, activity, that we would be attending conferences, and that the world's attention would be focused on this new rising star. So I thank the Honorable Minister Farrakhan for trusting me, trusting me to make journeys throughout the world in his company or without his company and trusting that the divine word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would be carried to those who are just coming into the knowledge of the nation and that our women we are the key he has said this is the field for the birthing of that new world order that men cannot make it by themselves it takes a strong valiant, courageous woman, morally fit to become that new woman, that new queen, that new goddess of a new world order. Wow. So joining us today to, to discuss Mother Tynetta's scholarship, her travels and cultural revolution, we have with us Sister Beverly Muhammad and Sister Sharif Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, dear sisters. And so like we're gonna, salam, brother really yes ma'am and i thank each of you all for um for agreeing to do this and for all the help that you've given me to, in the preparation for this interview so we're going to get right to right down to it so my first question is to both of you all we'll start with sister sharice and then we'll go to sister sister beverly um i would like for each of you to give us an opportunity give the audience an opportunity you know some to hear some learn some basic background about yourself for example how did you come to learn about the teachings of the most Elijah muhammad and eventually become a registered member well i was born and raised here in dc washington dc and i heard uh of minister farrakhan years before i even saw his face um through public enemy the group um i knew some brothers with public enemy and then of course being in washington dc i saw the brothers uh, the dope busters in uh, a neighboring neighborhood where I grew up here in Deanwood, Northeast Washington, D.C. So I saw the brothers in the bow ties and I'd see them carrying the Final Call newspaper. And I heard of Minister Farrakhan. And so being a, a, a child growing up in D.C., I was part of the Marion Barry Youth Leadership Institute. And that's where I met Brother Jackie Muhammad from the he's uh, part of the uh, research team for the minister. And um, I heard that the minister was going to be on Howard University's campus. And that was November the 18th, 1988. And he was at the Burr Gymnasium on Howard University's campus. And I ran into Brother Jackie that night. And just to show you how ignorant I was of the nation, I was standing in the brother's line because that was the shorter line. And I crossed paths with Brother Jackie. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm here to see Minister Farrakhan. He took me out of the line. He took me right inside Bird Gymnasium and sat me right down front. And that night, the minister had just left Chicago where his mother, Mother Samea Farrakhan, 
Muhammad was making her transition that night, unfortunately. And uh, but he on the mission was in D.C. to teach on drugs and the root cause of it. And that night, that was maybe a three or four hour lecture at Bird Gymnasium. And that night I knew I was going to be in the Nation of Islam. It was done once I heard the minister. And I first time I had even laid eyes on him and I knew him. And I said, I'm coming to the Nation of Islam. I'm done. So um, that night I went home, told my mother. And that's when, you know, I started sneaking to the mosque, uh, walking to the mosque. That's when the mosque on, in Washington, D.C. was at 1615 Kenilworth Avenue. And I was going to the mosque every opportunity I could and ended up because uh, this was high school. I was in high school. I hadn't even graduated yet. And I started going out. And because I wasn't in the Nation of Islam, normally in the nation, if you once you turn 16, you can write your letter for yourself. But when you're not, your parents are not in the nation, you can, you have to wait until you're of age. And I just waited and I continued to uh, come out to the mosque and attend meetings until I could write my letter. And uh, by the time I was freshman in college, I had written my letter and recited in Washington, D.C., packed my stuff to go to Atlanta for uh, Clark Atlanta University as a freshman. And so I wanted to get my ex and got my ex as a freshman in college. Beautiful, beautiful story, beautiful story. And now we're gonna go, we just heard that dynamic testimony from our sister, Sister Sharif. Now we're gonna hear from Sister Beverly. Yes, sir. Thank you, thanks, Brother Willie. You know, as I stated uh, before, my father was reading a book. It's entitled Black Muslims in America. And I slipped into his office and I read a portion of his book. I was nine years old, just a portion of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's quotes. And I said, when I grow up, I'm going to find him and I'm going to join with him and help him. And I did. And at the age of 19, I joined um, Muhammad's Mosque number seven in Harlem, New York. The minister was Minister Louis Farrakhan at that time. And I came into the temple. I've been in the Nation of Islam for 56 years. I read everything I could from the most of Elijah Muhammad. I studied very, very much, and I made sure that I was an obedient student. I was able to see by Allah's grace and glory that our people are in the condition. It is a divine condition, and it's going to take a divine solution for us to get out of it. So I became a Muslim, and since I was 19, I am now 75 years old. Wow, and it's interesting, the uh, common thread between both of your, your testimonies at a young age, right? And it just confirms for me, as I was talking to Sister Sharif off, Sister Sharice off camera, that as you all go back and study your lives, you see you're here for a reason. So the next question I want to ask, and we'll, we'll start with you, Sister Sharice, then we'll come back to Sister Beverly. You know, like many of us, I believe it's safe, safe to say that we first learned about Mother Tanetta as when we became members of the Nation of Islam mm -hmm. from the Final Call newspaper, hearing her talk. But you all um, have become a part, have part of a group of sisters who helped her on missions, study, travel, and et cetera. So can you talk about how you first became a part of that group of sisters who eventually become students of her? Um, for me, I started um, when I was a student at Clark Atlanta, when I was Vanguard, um, growing up in, in learning and training. Um, we trained with Brother Musa, Dr. Musa Muhammad. Um, we trained uh, in with Dr. Khaled. I mean, these were the days where, you know, we were getting training uh, in the Vanguard. And so initially um, I was working with uh, Mother Khadija, Mother Khadija Farrakhan as her security, and then um, would work with, eventually I would work with Mother Tynetta. But interestingly um, for me, that's my introduction to Mother Tynetta. I was studying her um, when I was a, a student, I almost flunked out of school because I was insatiably learning about the nation of Islam and the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I was going back to research back when she was Tynetta Dinar writing in the Pittsburgh Courier and writing the Women in Islam series uh, in the early days of the Final Call newspaper. So by the time I physically met 
Mother Tynetta. I was just wowed by her writing and her and the content of her writing and her style of writing. I've always likened her writing to tapestry. She's weaving all of these concepts, uh, all rooted in the basis of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But what draw, drew me specifically was the spiritual consciousness. There were things that I experienced as a toddler, as a young baby, um, that I remembered and I just didn't understand growing up in the church. I grew up Lutheran in Washington, D.C. And so um, for me, much of what I had experienced from the spiritual consciousness, I did not understand. And it was the minister. It was the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, and it was Mother Tynetta Muhammad who helped me to understand what I had actually experienced all of these years leading up to the nation of Islam. So for me, that's how I got my introduction. It was it was under the guise of being a security vanguard for Mother Tynetta, but it was much bigger than that because it availed me an opportunity to sit with Mother, to learn from Mother, to ask questions, and to specifically share with her some things that I had experienced as a young toddler and into you know a, adolescence, um, spiritual experiences, that spiritual consciousness. So that's how I, you know, was exposed to Mother Tynetta and became her security. And then more than that, it segued into helping her with her research and helping her on her on these missions that we talked about, missions of information gathering, fact finding, research, and helping her with the projects that she was commissioned to do. And that's wow. what we did in terms of assisting her. See that that is that's confirmation to the discussion that we were having before we came on and now we're going to before our next break we're going to go to sister beverly same question to you as well um mother tanetta you know has this, a whole nation of students brothers and sisters uh, such as master artists carrie muhammad brother kenny the human percussionist even my husband brother tim mm -hmm. so to prove the teachings in many ways mother tanetta had um presented them over a wide spectrum. I learned about Mother Tynetta Muhammad prior to 1975 when she was Tynetta Dinar writing in the Muhammad Speaks. And she wrote these articles under that name. Later in 1991, Brother Tim and I were invited to have dinner with her at a believer's home. At that time, I shared a dream with her that I had the night before about the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He gave me a message and I shared that dream with her. And she told me tomorrow, I will let you know what he meant by that dream. I was like, wow. So I shared that dream with her. And from that moment on, she and I were bonded. She began to become very um, intricate and active in my study of her writings and her equations and her formulas. And she would give me problems to solve. One of the first assignments that she gave me involved a very elementary physics formula that I composed called the 3M factor. And it was based on problem 13. She wanted to know how could we use letters in numbers. That was my assignment to explain Muhammad in the West. So I took Master Far um, Muhammad's name, Master W. Far Muhammad, equal 19 letters, Elijah Muhammad 14, Louis Farrakhan 14, and I added them up and they came to the number 47. And then when I overlaid that with the Quran, the 47th chapter in the Holy Quran is Muhammad, proving that the Muhammad that came to the West in the 3M factor is also connected with the Quran. Then I transported the reverse engineering with that number and came with the number, of course, 74. And it was in 1974 that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad left and to go to the second third of his mission. And he introduced us at that time to one of the scientists on the stage. So from then on, she began to give me more and more assignments and I would inquire more and more. Uh, the final assignment she gave me that I was able to present to her um, was why was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad being born in San showing a very strong correlation between the explosion of our planet Mars 66 trillion years ago. And she was very pleased with that. So I've been kind of following her as a, a student for some years, and I am truly grateful 
for her taking the time to entertain my questions and look at my answers to her questions. Wow. We, you know, we're only two questions in and, and what you all have shared thus far is rich in substance. So we're going to go to our first break. But when we come back, brothers and sisters, we're going to have more of this testimony from our sisters, Sister Sharice Muhammad and Sister Beverly Muhammad on the scholarship, the travels and the cultural revolution of Mother Tanana Muhammad. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps to combat false media. Cash App NNV News. And we're back, brothers and sisters, to continue this interview. And I want to get right to this next question. We'll start with Sister Sharice, and then we'll go to our sister, Sister Beverly. From both of your perspectives, I would like to uh, know what do you think about the, this this discussion highlighting Mother Tanetta's scholarship, her travels, and her research on cu cultural revolution. Why is it important during this time? Well, the culture uh, is the mark of a civilization. And as Master Father Muhammad said, that the most beautiful nation is in the wilderness of North America, as he instructed the MGT and GCC, of which Mother is one of the pillars of our class. Um, and her cult, the cultural revolution um, is a testament of God's coming for us because he would raise us from the dead level. And so for, for Mother Tynetta, much of her work was culturally, cultural links, culturally linked, linking us back to civilization, the highest of civilized society. So her writings and the research that she has, um, she's conducted uh, is a testament of a line of cultural expression, cultural existence of a dead people, of a once dead people. And so for us as, you know, what we call ourselves little helpers uh, of Mother Tynetta, um, we were very instrumental in helping her to bring that to life and to bring it and to present it to the nation, not just the uh, nation of Islam here in the West, but the 4 billion, 400 million of us throughout the world. And so it's very important that as, um, as we as little helpers were able to ensure and make and ensure that she was able to present this in the manner that Allah was giving this to her and her husband giving this to her, um, ensuring that that was transmitted as perfectly as the transmission itself. Beautiful. And thank you for that response, Sister. And Sister Beverly, your thoughts as well? Yes, I, I totally agree with Sister Sharice. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he was president among us, he sent Mother Tynetta Muhammad around the world to gather proof and do research about our lost civilization, the tribe of Shabazz, so that we may once more come back into the knowledge of who we 
are and where we came from. And all of this study, Brother Willie, she has shared so unselfishly with us as a nation. And her help to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in this phase of the resurrection of uh, our nation. And by doing so, what has happened, she sparked in all of her students. Anyone who studies Mother Tynetta is considered a student of Mother Tynetta. <clears throat> and what she did, she, she sparked in all of us the quest to take on a new uh, intellect, a new mind, uh, by being guided by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, while he is guided by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So each of us, we bring our own special talent, our own special knowledge, if you will, to her curriculum. And as a whole, together, we can create a new mindset for a new world. I, I said I was going to get this feeling. We're not even scratching the surface. <laughs> we, there's so much. Wow. So let me let me stay focused and stay on this next question. So this one is to you, Sister Sharice. You know, Mother Tanetta strongly advocated for the emergence of a cultural revolution. She interviewed such greats as Prince, uh, Alice Coltrane, and performed with some of the greats inside the nation of Islam uh, and outside of the nation of Islam. Uh, can, you had the privilege of accompanying Mother Tanetta when she visited the great African-American dancer and choreographer, uh, Catherine Dunham, right? Can you share with us that experience? Yes, um, we've affectionately regarded her as Madame, mm -hmm. uh, Madame Catherine Dunham. Um, going back to high school, I was a dance major at Duke Ellington School of the Arts. So art, culture, music, I grew up with that. And of course, Catherine Dunham, Madame, she was one of the greats that we studied in terms of her own dance technique, um, having studied in Haiti and other areas. And people aren't may not be aware that Madame was a, an anthropologist. She was a, a scholar in anthropology. And so that was the cultural link of Mother and Catherine Dunham. Now, when she was performing, she had this production that she was doing in uh, Chicago at one time. And uh, we were we went with Mother Tynette as a delegation to see this production. And of course, Madame was there. Uh, she was seated on the wing of the stage, uh, off, off to the wing of the stage. And um, we were there and I don't know, I was inspired to get up right before curtain time. And I just started to sort of wander to, to see if I could find her. And sure enough, she was seated and um, I went up to her and I introduced myself and I said, Mother Tynetta's here. Mother Tynetta Muhammad is here. And she says, oh my goodness, because she had already met Mother Tynetta when she was also uh, a part of the minister's delegation to meet with um, Madame because she was on that fast. She had done so many days of a fast in uh, support of the Haiti people and how the United States was not as congenial to our brothers and sisters in Haiti. And so that was her initial meeting of Madame. So uh, fast forward to a couple of years later, she was doing this um, production, uh, dance and creative, it was musical. And um, so she, I let her know that Mother Tynetta was there. She says, oh, please go get her. So of course I go back to the, to, the, uh, to the audience where we were all seated. And I just said, Mother, collect your things. She wants to see you. And she says, well, what are you talking about? And I said, Madame wants to see you. And so, of course, we grabbed all of her, you know, had she had two bags or whatever. And we wa I walked with her up to the stage and we got chairs and she spent the rest of the production that night, the performance and everything seated with Madame on the wing of the stage. So, again, this was, um, you know, the connection between Mother and Madame was just it was incredible to see those two come together, the, the meeting. Um, and then, of course, we visited her home in East St. Louis. Her home was like a museum. All of her uh, costuming. Um, many people may remember Madame from uh, 1947, the uh, production of um, Stormy Weather with Lena Horne and uh, Louis Armstrong and a few other Black artists. But uh, she had a, a dance theme in that film. So when people go back and look at it on YouTube, you know, stormy weather. Most people know her from that dance uh, motif. 
but uh, she was much more than that. She was a spiritual being. Uh, we were there at the foot of her bed, Mother Tynetta and I, and she read us. She read Mother and she read me. And so um, that's something that I will always, always treasure uh, because she was also uh, on a much higher spiritual consciousness and plane. And she was definitely a companion of Mother Tynetta Muhammad. Wow, amazing. And we're coming up before our next break. I want to get this question in and thank you, Sister Sharice, for what you shared. And it makes me want to go and do more research on Catherine Dunham for myself, and I plan on actually doing so. And I'll go to this next question to Sister Beverly. We were talking about Sister Sharice, Sharice was talking about the cultural revolution. I would like to ask you this question. You know, what from, from your time around Mother Tanetta, what did she mean? Can you share more about what she meant? regarding the cultural revolution and how does it help the nation of Islam and as our people and our people as a whole? Sure. Mother Tanetta Muhammad called me, I think it was 1996, may have been the early part of 1997. And she told me she was going to change the name of her column in the final call. She was going to change it to a three-dimensional title, which she called In Search of the Messiah, Unveiling the number 19, let the cultural revolution begin. Focusing on a third dimension uh, theme, the cultural revolution, um, is a set of these three dimensions were a set for global success for our nation. The cultural revolution, when you put it in simple terms, Brother Willie, as she told me, is one thing that unites all different languages, all different geographies all the different different variations on the planet can come together under cultural um, means. For example, you can hear a song sung in a different language. You may not understand what the person singing that song is saying because you may not speak that language. But if you can go past that, you go into the transitioning of the properties of that song and the melody of that song you can break down the barriers and can unite with the person, even though that person singing the song, you don't know what they're saying. Or we can use the Taha Suite, Mother Tynetta composed music. It's her symphonic composition. She never took music lessons and she was never trained in music, but Mother could actually interpret the sounds that she heard from her environment and she could compose them. And if you listen to the Taha Suite, what you're going to hear there is a, a blend from China, um, tones and harmonics from Mongolia, Europe, Africa, urban America, and they're all in a collaboration in a symphony. You see, the, the crowning glory of Mother Tynetta's innovation in music is no different from John Coltrane or Miles Davis because great musicians, they know how to translate universal harmonics through their instrument and they play what they feel. It becomes metaphysical. You play what you feel. You talk through your instrument, you gather sounds that are coming from the universe and you translate those sounds into music for the world to enjoy and for the world to be a part of. It's very multidimensional. So Mother is appealing to us um, as a nation to create a culture, to create a culture that would be universal and comprehensive globally. And this fine example is certainly displayed with the recent concert of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, where he mastered the composition of Beethoven, hundreds of years old, to the point that master musicians from around the world, they were just astonished at his accomplishment. So even though it was a, 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 something that we may not hear every day, the world heard it. And because of that, the minister broke through the sound barrier and came to rest in a place of great honor, which, of course, is certainly due to him. We thank you for that. Now, sister, before we go to break, sister, sister Sharice had something additional that she wanted to add to that. And we have this two minute break. Sure. Go ahead, sister Sharice. I just wanted to add that mother defied music theory. 
you know, when you're learning music formally, you're always in, enforcing the rules of music and what can't be done and what, you know, it, it has to flow within this confine and mother was not confined in terms of her musicality. What she heard is what she played and there were no rules. And so I wanted to just interject that. Well, that's a, what, what, what Sister Beverly shared and what you all, what you shared as well, that's a powerful interjection. And I'm so happy that you all were able to, um, to share that. And it's, listen, we're only scratching the surface. <laughs> we may have to do part two, part three or whatever on this. So we're gonna go to this break and we're gonna be back with our guests to share more of their dynamic testimony about the scholarship, the travels and the cultural revolution of Mother Tanetta Muhammad. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps to combat false media. Cash App, NNV News. AsiaticMinds.com, the curriculum of study from the University of God's Mind. Education that enhances the quality of learning through a virtual school system. The science of mathematics, communication, and deductive reasoning. Our children are the future. Invest in your destiny. To enroll now, visit AsiaticMinds.com. Worldwide, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download the Final Call Radio app and take us everywhere. everywhere. On your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also log on to FinalCall.com and click the Listen Live button. Or FinalCallRadio.com. Final Call, Final Call Radio. The official voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Thank you for tuning in to NNV News. Please share your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Follow us on social media at NNV News and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, National Network View. This is Clifton Muhammad with NNVNews.com. Muhammad's economic blueprint, the collective power of our dollars to build a future for ourselves. With five cents a day, 35 cents a week, a dollar and 40 cents a month, and $18.20 a year multiplied by 16 million wage earners would give us $291 million in one year. Everyone can give 35 cents a week as an investment in our future. Donate now and see what our pennies, nickels, and dimes can accomplish. Visit economicblueprint.org. And we're back and now we want to make this transition to talk about her scholarship of Mother Tanetta Muhammad. I'll start with you, Sister Beverly. Can you talk about the significance of Mother Tanetta's scholarship and its connections to the teachings and mission of her husband, the, the Most Honorable Muhammad? Yes, sir, Brother Billy, thank you. That's a great question. Mother Tanetta Muhammad's scholarship destroys the concept of us following a religion. It verifies that Islam is not a religion. It is a science, the science of our nature. Mother Tanetta's scholarship is the fulfillment of the supreme wisdom scientific assignments given to her by her husband, um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. There was no subject, great or small, that Mother Tanetta would not look deep into, very deep into and to find the connectivity of the teachings to the of our teachings to whatever it was she was studying she connected the teachings to whatever it was that she was researching or learning or even expressing and these methods and findings that she shared with us she shared with us so that we may also become the scientists that we once were before we became lost she informs us that we will not be successful by bringing a knowledge base that is um, dying out uh, to substantiate a new world order of intelligence, reasoning, and understanding. That old mind, um, Brother Willie, cannot even pierce the magnificence of universal application. It is already becoming obsolete. For example, how do you rationalize 
the continuing war in Ukraine, where innocent men, women are being murdered and slaughtered every day, while the leadership of this world order sit around and try to work out the politics of it all. That is insane. And that type of man, uh, mind and that type of leadership, we will never have to suffer that anymore in the new world order of intellect, in the new world order where Allah alone is God. And wow. And now we, we're still on, on scholarship, you know, Sister Sharice, I'll ask you this question because I've come across pictures online and in the final call where Mother Tanetta was in, in some museum, right? And as we talked, you had the opportunity to accompany, accompany her when she visited several museums. Can you talk about and share with us about the trips to the National Geographic Museum and also the Field Museum? The Field Museum, definitely. Um, we and, and sister, we're not just speaking for ourselves too. We have sisters all over the nation who worked with mother who would get that phone call and say, I'd like to go here, I'd like to go there. And we set it up, let's go. And we would set it up and we would go. Um, the National um, Geographics um, always was doing, and, and still does, uh, exhibits that, that speak to the original people, the indigenous people throughout the world. Um, so it's more of a study of self and our evolution in time. Uh, the Field Museum, was a, a major uh, museum and place where mother frequented and would do st uh, study and research. Uh, different churches, different uh, exhibits throughout the city. We would just go different places. Um, and going with mother was like an excursion because we, ne we didn't necessarily know what she had in mind at the time, but she would teach once we got there. And she would give us the perspective. And then, of course, she's note taking. Sometimes she would say, you go to this exhibit and come back with what you see and give us a report. Or she would give Sister Beverly, um, this is what I want you to do. So it, it was it was always fact finding research. And um, she wanted to hear what we thought. How did you feel? What did you see um, in, in this particular exhibit? How did it affect you? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? because she was always wanting to know what was our response to the exhibits and how did we feel about, um, or if we brought, we brought questions to her, you know, this reminded me of question number 13 and, and this aspect, we started to sort of break down and do comparison of answers. Um, I thought this, uh, or speaking to the history of what was contained in the lessons, uh, the problem book, uh, instructions uh, to the laborers, so all of the Supreme Wisdom book was the base of the study and uh, all of that, uh, the exhibits and how we would pull all of that together and how did that weave and how did that intermingle with the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and how did it affect us? So that was kind of in a nutshell why and how we function and kind of circuits around mother as we were going in and out of the different museums and that that i'm telling you is is so inspirational now it really has sparked a desire in myself to visit museums more and and you know what i'm saying to to get out there and take advantage of going and learn from the museums that we have in our city and it's interesting you closed out by talking about the lessons and that's going to segue into my next question to sister sister beverly you know sister sharice talked about the lessons and the supreme wisdom and and being able to apply it. So what can you share regarding uh, Mother Tanetta, you know, what she shared with you all and discussions you all had regarding the Supreme Wisdom lessons and more, and also how can they be applied in our daily living? Oh, sure. Mother Tanetta Muhammad has always informed us that just by repeating the lessons from the Supreme Wisdom uh, from Master Father Muhammad, we are able to make our brains and our minds to work in perfect alignment with the mind and the thinking of Allah himself so that we may become more in tune with a higher consciousness. Because there is a force, Brother Willie, she says, within the darkness of our being that is always seeking to pull up thought and pull up intelligence and bring that thought and bring that intelligence into the light of understanding. Let me give you an example. 
why are we taught to consider the Panama Canal and problem number 34, for example, except that uh, we must understand that to bridge over from one world into another world would mean a journey of degree after degree, level after level, and each degree raising us up to a higher level and then a higher level and a higher level until we can master and perfect our understanding of the mission and um, the God that came in person. So now you do know that the Panama Canal is constructed uh, lifting boats from the lower side of the country of Panama, which is the Atlantic Ocean, level by level to uh, release them to the Pacific side of the country of Panama, which is of a higher sea level. So what happens is that the boats come in on the Atlantic side and they are locked in and water is uh, poured into that um, particular containment where that boat, that ship is, and it elevates. And when it gets to a certain level, another um, segment is locked in another container and the boat comes over and then that water is added and it goes up. And degree by degree and level by level, they are elevated so that they could go into the Pacific Ocean. And this avoids them going all the way around the tip of South America, close to Antarctica, just to get to the Pacific Ocean. So Mother Tynetta taught us these problems. It gives us a clear understanding of how Allah will carry us through a process of transitioning from one world to the next world. And it also strengthens us that we may be patient with one another, loving with one another, and help each other in the process of this studious appointment to achieve um, enlightenment. Beautiful. And I, I know we, I got to ask this question. I think it's a good question. I hope you all are prepared. Brother Jamil asked, and you probably see it in the uh, chat. And I'll go to, bro, I'll go to uh, Sister Sharice, and then we'll quickly come back to Sister Bevel, and we'll close out because we have five minutes. We'll go to, to our next break. Brother uh, Jamil asked, he said, I was always, oh, from his lift, he was lifted by Mother Tanetta's use of humor and teaching and conversation. So what was, one of your funniest moments with Mother Tanetta. We'll go, we'll start with you and then we'll close out with Sister Beverly. I know that's a audible. I can say mine in two minutes. The <laughs> funniest, the funniest. Uh, I was in a car waiting for Mother to come out. She was doing some work and uh, she was ready to leave. And inadvertently, I had a Prince CD in. I was listening to Prince. And it was uh, the name of the song was Sexy. MF. Right, right, right. And I was listening to that and I forgot that the CD was in. So of course mother gets in, she turns on the radio and dun, 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 and then Prince is singing the song. And I said, oh, wait a minute, mother, wait, 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 wait. And I turned it, <laughs> bam, 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 I'm trying to turn it off so that I could take it off and maybe switch to another song by Prince. But I had forgotten, I was listening to that song uh, before mother got in the car. So mother said oh is that prince and i said that's prince i said but that i'm sorry mother that that song was totally totally inappropriate and she says well no 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 okay that's prince okay and so i went on and played something else but uh she kind of chuckled and she kept looking at me as i was driving and i was so embarrassed but i love prince and that was one of the songs that you know i was you know was on the you know the circuit of songs that's on the cd and so of course mother kind of chuckled again and we laughed and so <laughs> i was just embarrassed because I, I don't want mother to hear that, you know, but that was one of the things that uh, we chuckled about and um, light moment, but still. <laughs> that is <laughs> definitely, that is, that's definitely a light moment. And because we also know, as I yeah. mentioned in one of the questions that she would later have, she would later interview Prince. Interview so Prince. <laughs> so Sister, Sister Beverly, you have any before we close out to go to this next? Oh, that, yes. that, that, that's a moment. <laughs> Before we go to this next break. My moment was, was right after the Million Man March and we came back to the hotel and I was standing next to Mother Tynette and a few other brothers, I mean sisters, and Isaac Hayes walked in, Will Smith, and the, the young brother Alfonso, I think his name was, Alonzo, that played, you know, on the Will Smith program. The three of them were together and 
I just adore Isaac Hayes, Big Bubba. That was, to me, he's just so fantastic. And he walked over. And when he walked over, I said, I whispered to Mother Tynetta, I said, Mother Tynetta, that's Isaac Hayes. I think he's coming to greet you. And she got all ready to greet him and say, I saw alaikum. And he mistook me for Mother Tynetta Muhammad and took my hand. And he was giving all these accolades. You know, I really appreciate everything you were doing. And I was so stargazed, I wouldn't let his hand go. And Mother kept punching me in the side, like, <clears throat> excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> so she and I laughed about that forever. And I told her, I'm so sorry to steal your moment, Mother, but. And she said, "How dare you?" <laughs> that now that that now that is, that is funny. You even got Brother Musai back there laughing. Now that is funny the two that you all. I'm not going to tell you some of the things that she teased me with, like man take her. <laughs> <laughs> wow, now that that is funny. So look, we're we're coming up on our next break, and for those who are joining us, we appreciate your support and your viewership. We ask that you continue to share this. Get other people to tune in to hear this dynamic testimony about Mother Tanetta's scholarship, her travels, and her cultural revolution. And we have some other questions that we're going to get into that you all sure that we all will learn with our dynamic guests, Sister Sharice and Sister Beverly. We'll be right back. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps us to highlight solutions for a brighter tomorrow. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate. AsiaticMinds.com, the curriculum of study from the University of God's Mind. Education that enhances the quality of learning through a virtual school system. The science of mathematics, communication, and deductive reasoning. Our children are the future. Invest in your destiny. To enroll now, visit AsiaticMinds.com. The hashtag Bank Black social media campaign made strides not only in revolutionizing how we bank, but also how we think. The movement inspired thousands of African Americans across the country to transfer or deposit millions of dollars into Black-owned banks. These are banks that will invest in urban communities, employ African Americans, support Black businesses, and inspire Black home ownership. This is a very proud moment for our culture as we are taking small but significant steps towards building Black power through Black wealth. Please share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Follow us on social media at NMV News, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel at National Network View. I am Anissa Muhammad with nnvnews.com. We're back, brothers and sisters. I know if you were here before that, that last break, you heard those funny stories dealing with Prince and Isaac Hayes. So one, we have a, several, many more questions I want to ask. So I want to make sure we get these in. So Sister Beverly, I want to ask you this question before we go to the next question with our sister, Sister Sharice. You know, Mother Tanetha educated our nation as well as the public regarding her study about the mathematical code of 19 in the Holy Quran. Can you share with, with us from uh share with us from what Mother Tanetta had what she gave and gives to us in regards to understanding the relevance of that code and as it relates to the Holy Quran? Oh absolutely brother um brother Willie by finding um the repeating of the number 19 in the structure and the meaning of the Holy Quran we immediately come to realize that the Holy Quran is revealed in a manner of processing of a higher intelligence, which is indisputable and incomparable. 
This characterizes the Holy Quran as having a, a unique numerical phenomena, which is not found in any human authored book on the planet Earth. Uh, not only are the Quran surahs and ayats mathematically composed, meaning the literal word of God is mathematically um, composed, but the words, the, the spelling of those words, the letters that in the Arabic letters and how they are used, they all contribute to the overall structure and composition of the Quran where the number 19 is consistent throughout. Um, the Holy Quran. This is without question a verification of the fact that the highest intelligence in the universe, yes, we can even say that God himself is the author of the Holy Quran. Let me just give you maybe one or two examples. The Holy Quran has 114 chapters. That's a multiple of 19 times six. There's six basic steps. Um, in our salat, and when we multiply that um, times 19, it equals 114, the total numbers of the Holy Quran. The first um, revealed surah in the Holy Quran is Surah 96. It has 19 verses. The name Allah appears 2,641 um, 2, times, which is a multiple of 19 times 139. Prophet Muhammad was the 19th prophet of Islam. Now, one would have to wonder, what is Allah's calculus and what is he coding here for us? We are taught that the number one and the number 19 represents the first original man, Allah himself. This is what Mother Tainata Muhammad teaches. The man is that number one in that number 19 because the man possesses a nature that is linear, straight up and down. He is the standard bearer. He is the law of Allah's oneness himself. The woman is also created with a number one and she is linear. However, Allah gave her a, a nature very slightly different than the man's because on the top of her number one is a perfect circle. And that circle represents an immeasurable infinity of Allah's nature found everywhere belonging in his universe. That means that through her, there is no limit to his presence. He himself is made infinite through the, uh, the magnificence of the woman. There's a meaning in the number nine when it is seen written in hieroglyphic form that just looking at the number nine gives us this wisdom of Allah. So teaches Mother Tainata Muhammad. And that number 19 is found very dominant, very consistent through the Quran, giving and bearing witness to the signature of God and to the black man and black woman, the first to live in the sun, the original tribe of Shabazz. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for, for sharing that insight and, and giving us even giving us more uh, insight into the number 19. And now we want to transition. We talked about the cultural revolution. We talked about the, the scholarship. Now we want to get into the travels, right? And this is interesting too. And I thank both of you all for helping me be able to come up with the idea for this, with this question, because Sister Sharice, you know, Sandersville, Georgia is a place of great significance to members of the Nation of Islam, for it is the home of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you, from what I, what I was informed, that you and Sister Beverly, that you all visited uh, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's father's church with Mother Tanetta. Can you talk about that experience and how and how she was received too? Oh, wow. that That was an awesome trip. Um, because as you know, with Sandersville, uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's father was a Baptist preacher in Sandersville. And we visited the church and please forgive me, I'm trying to pull it up on my phone um, to the name of the actual church. But when we were there, we had gotten word to the uh, minister there and they actually stopped the worship service and they allowed mother to come in and stand in the pulpit to address the congregation. And it was so awesome because it was just that spontaneous to know that she was there and they knew who she was and is. 
So, and so standing up there, watching her from the rear of the, of the church was just spectacular. It was majestic to watch her address the congregation. And so um, there were other aspects of the trip in Sandersville. We were literally in the woods. I mean, we were changing our shoes to put on sneakers so we could walk in, you know, in the in the woods in some of the area where we believe the most honorable Elijah Muhammad traveled and his family traveled in that area of Sandersville. Um, but I think that to me was a very um, impactful trip to, to witness that. The energy of the area was very charged as well. So um, th to, uh, to witness it, and I believe there are some photos, I'm just not sure who has those photos, but there is a photo of mother in that pulpit, um, a, a, a image in my head that I probably will never, never forget. Yes. And, you know, that's real significant because, you know, we've heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talk about how he was once speaking in the church and the pastor had mentioned about women not being able to speak from the pulpit. And I'm not I'm not saying that that church could have been of that thinking, but just for them to be able to do that when we know that some people have that that narrow mindedness. So appreciate you for sharing that. And now we're going to go back to our sister, Sister Beverly. Can you share, you know, one of the travels you accompany? Uh, Mother Tanetta on and what did you learn? Well, I was on that same trip with Sandersville. Mother Tanetta called me. I was living in Washington, D.C. And she said, I think it would be a great idea if we began our journey to the Million Man March one week, seven days prior, starting it in Sandersville, Georgia. She wanted to start that trip in Sandersville, Georgia, and every day chronicle until we got to the Million Man March. And that's indeed is what we did. And, and just like mother would always do, she would have a group of, of uh, students, researchers, and students that wanted to learn to accompany us. Uh, Sister Antonio, Sister Consuela, Brother Wendell from Atlanta accommodated us very beautifully. And we ended up, um, this uh, it was abandoned, uh, but we ended up at the home where the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was born. And right down the, the red dirt road, the church that Sister um, Sharice is referring to. And that's how Mother Tynetta began her journey to Washington, D.C. for the Million Man March. But there's uh, something else that I would like to share as well, because we are, I also went with her um, when she met a group of Sufis. And I've seen her around Sufis before, but these particular Sufis were world masters. And they invited her to this home. And she was invited as their guests. And to see these people who wanted to learn from her, to see them pay close attention to every word that was coming out of her mouth, helped me to understand how critical her supplemental courses to the resurrection of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the guidance to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is. It has world impact. The world is desperately in need of a cutting edge knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And to see Mother Tainetta Muhammad, one of the mothers of the faithful of our holy nation of Islam in the West, to see these wise masters who have studied Islam for years and years sit at her feet and listen to everything she had to say so obediently. And then when it was over to hear them discussing certain aspects of it, it really took me to a, a real level. And I was so blessed to be a part of that and to be a witness of that on more than one occasion, but I have one occasion in my mind. Mother Tynetta said that um, we need to challenge the curriculum that she presents because it is a supplemental curriculum to put us on top immediately, a supplemental curriculum to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the proper use of our thought, the proper use of our language in this regard, we be able to attain high levels, be it the will of Allah, and change this earth overnight. 
we do we we sleep mother time a lot of times brother because we may not understand how she speaks mm. but if we were to just go into her lessons and start mm. repeating them allah will give you the light of understanding of them because they are for you mm. and for me from her the minister and the messenger and from mm. Allah himself. Beautiful. And our sister, uh, sister Sharice had held up that book when we was before we went live, The Come By Night, which is a book that all of the writings of the most of, of Mother Tanetta, the, the wife of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a wife of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we definitely need to read. And Sister Sharice, I want to ask you this question because leading up to this interview, we we talked about the you mentioned the Mongo movie premiere, and we know that Mother Tanetta has written extensively about the history of the Mongols. Can you talk about what you witnessed at that movie premiere? Well, first, I want to acknowledge Sister Anita in that picture with Mother Tanetta. She extensively traveled with Mother, as did other sisters. Um, so I just want to continue to reiterate the fact that she, Mother Tanetta had teams of people, Sister Callie Muhammad in oh, uh, Ohio, in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, Sister Dr. Darnita, there were countless sisters, Sister Antonio, Sister Consuelo, Rachman, sisters all over the nation that traveled with mother. Um, the Mongol movie premiere was the story of Genghis Khan. And anyone who has read any of Mother Tainetta's articles regarding Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan, um, Mother, leading up to the, uh, to the Million Man March, talked about the Silk Road project. And I know uh, Sister Beverly can go more into that, into the details of that. But I wanted to make mention of the Mongolian people and how her study of Genghis Khan, Kublai Khan, uh, with regards to their military minds. You want to talk about um, the movie premiere. And I know Sister Marcella of the Final Call newspaper in Chicago also accompanied us as well. She was part of that delegation to go with us to see the Mongol movie, the story again of, Ging, of uh, Kublai Khan, I'm sorry, Genghis Khan. Um, the interesting story um, at the end of the movie, and I don't wanna tell it because people should go, it's, it's actually on YouTube, so people can YouTube and watch Mongol, the story of, of uh, Genghis Khan. The end to me was just the, the last battle, and it was a, a battle between the um, armies of Genghis and his brother. And to watch the artistry of, of war and that ending battle scene was the culmination of the entire movie. Because we talk about, when people talk about Genghis Khan, they talk about the most strategic military mind ever. And uh, people from the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States and other uh, countries in terms of their military study the war uh, tactics of Genghis Khan. But uh, that movie was just awesome to watch. And of course, you're learning so much. And of course, Mother was so excited to be there at that premiere. And uh, so when we talk about that period of time leading up to the Million Man March, uh, Mother Tynetta's book, The Million Man March, is a gem of writings because it, it encapsulizes all of our culture as Nation of Islam members. Um, what Master the Father Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, have given us in terms of our culture is contained in that book. And then right after the Million Man March, the minister goes into the, directly goes into the World Friendship Tour of which Mother Tynetta was part of the delegation. And of course, her writings during that time, um, the music of Yo-Yo Ma, the cellist, the music of um, Karen Griggs, who used to who plays violin, she used to play with um, Yanni. So these are musicians who are bringing this element of culture to us, and mothers weaving that into her writings. Because again, this is what's inspiring um, our lessons. Because part of that area of the country of the world impacts our lessons and how we are rejoining as we are uh, being healed, remade, 
and elevated. So again, mother's work is very critical to this process. And I believe for us as vanguards, when I think about us as young women, you know, growing up in Islam and the, and the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the study was so important. Mother kept that study and scholarship. She drilled that into us because it's more than just saying I'm a member of the Nation of Islam. Our qualifications are coming by means of our study. And we are going to have to be remade all over again through this word. That's why when Sister Beverly talked about read it, read it again read it again. And each time you're reading it, you're actually recoding the very cells in our body, starting with thought. And, and it, you know, the all of Mother Tynetta's articles and, and, and videos, the 10th, the brain, the 10th system, all of this is key as we study her, her work so that we can continue in our evolution so that we may qualify to be accepted by Allah and the Christ. Wow, and that, that's something that you mentioned that there's a brother that I know using the uh, curriculum that Mother Tanetta uh, had in, has in regards to being able to read the lessons within seven days, right? The Supreme Wisdom. And he's been doing it for about two going on three years. And he talked about as a, he tells me as a result of him doing that, he sees the difference in his thinking and even how he handles problems that come up and even the improvements in his life. So what you said was definitely on point. And while we're talking about, as our sister, sister Sharice talked about the Mongols and the movie premiere, Sister Beverly, I want to ask you this question in regards to, can you talk about the spiritual significance of the, the Mongol empire in regards to, and its, and its relevance to the history of the nation of Islam? Absolutely. And that, that was the key point that Mother Tanetta was trying to get across to us that we needed to study Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, unfortunately, and it is very disturbing, is only revered in the Western world as a ruthless maniac whose only purpose in life was to murder relentlessly. But that is not true. Absolutely not true. Genghis Khan changed the world, the then known world. He conquered a vast territory which ranged from Siberia, Russia, to India, to Vietnam, to Hungary, back over to Korea, and then back over to the Balkans. He destroyed the upper levels of the greedy aristocrats and redistributed wealth evenly among all the people that he conquered. He didn't keep any wealth for himself. He reorganized the Old Silk Road, which then was the, the largest commercial route at that time in history. And he made it the largest free trade zone in the then known world. He lowered taxes. He abolished taxes altogether for teachers, doctors, and educational institutions. He created the first international law because every aspect that he conquered, mind you, he conquered Russia and India and Persia and all these other countries. He brought them under one law and he brought them together under that a code of conduct and jurisprudence that made them one. Whether they wanted to be or not, he brought them all into one. He refused to hold hostages. He didn't hold any hostages. He turned all the bounties of war back to his soldiers and to the cities so that the commercial entities could prosper from his circulation, Brother Willie. In essence, he connected many civilizations around him into a new world order. In fact, the founding fathers of the United States of America, and this is not a secret, based their constitution of the United States on the tenets that were drawn up by Genghis Khan back in 1200. His war um, reputation was only a means, a harsh means, but it was a means uh, that he determined to end the scourge of the Middle Ages and end the scourge of the gods and magogs and the people like that. Um, he wanted to bring them under the law of oneness, and that indeed he did. The benefits gained by that, those countries that he conquered and brought into a better civilization, brought into the oneness of jurisprudence and counsel and conduct, believe me, the world elevated. And that's where you got the European Renaissance from. 
you see. And so she wanted us as a nation to see what good we could do by bringing others under the oneness. And Honorable, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he's warning us today that that's exactly what Allah is going to do. Allah is going to bring this world into the oneness of obedience one way or another. But Allah will be the winner. Our praise is due to Allah. Praise be to Allah. And can we, uh, we'll, can I, um, Sister, wow, so so much. I don't, this just came up. I got to ask you this question, you all this question too, because it's a good question, Brother Jamil. Blame Brother Jamil. He posted it. He asked in regards to, uh, can you all share in regards to the, the? because I thought about it. We're talking of scholarship, travels, uh, cultural revolution, and it, also, Jamil's question made me think about even uh, design, right? So, can you talk about her designs and Brother Musa? Can you can you bring the picture up that they have with Mother Tanetta? She's holding the Quran as they talk about her designs. We'll go with Sister Sharice, and then we'll come to Sister Beverly. Yes, Mother Tanetta's designs. Um, her Altai A L hyphen T A I um, uh, fashion line was specifically inspired by the Mongolian people and the Mongolian culture. And uh, when you look at those um, designs, they reminded me, I mean, I'm just looking now, I, they reminded me of some of the Aztec, Inca, um, Mexican, uh, Mezzo uh, designs. So again, all of these things are just culturally linked. And um, a lot of her work, uh, she would design her own clothes. And you want to go, you want to talk about a woman who you know, wears what she designs. And so that was inspiring enough. The, num the, the, the three pleat in the different colors, the number 19, the Samarkand, the Sochi. These are all designs that Mother Tainetta has been, you know, putting together for the women of the Nation of Islam. Mother Khadija Farrakhan, same thing. Her designs was, is and was and is to, to bring about the emergence of a new woman. The new women. That was a that's a picture of Mother Tainetta, Mother Khadija, Mother Khadija Farrakhan, and Sister um, Sister Claudette and Sister Karima of New York. Um, they were at a they were a delegation to the World Conference in Beijing, China. So again, this is you know the minister sent them as a delegation to represent the nation of Islam. And again, part of what we heard in some of the recording that you had mentioned earlier or played earlier in this broadcast was Mother Tynetta addressing the MGT and GCC vanguard, that we would be delegations, but we can't go not representing who we are and what we are. We have to know what we're talking about. We have to know unequivocally the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, what it has done for us and what it will mean for us as women to represent and women all over the world. Because this teaching is not just for us, it's for all of the whole of humanity. But what better way to segue a, a, such a powerful teaching to women who were completely destroyed? That is, so I wanted that is to true. mention that. That is, that is, that is, that is, that is true. And Sister Beverly, your thoughts? Yes. Um, one day in discussion, Mother asked me, do you know why I called it the number 19? And of course, <laughs> I didn't, but she did explain to me. She said, it's the number 19. It goes back to what I just explained um, just a moment ago. The number 19, if you look at it, has one simple pattern. One simple pattern. Every garment 19 is cut out in the same very simple, easy to make pattern, easy to cut, easy to sew. But, and that that she said was likened to that number one in the number 19 is linear. That pattern does not change. It always will remain the same. But that number nine that I just expressed that she taught about what the number nine represented, you can look at the number 19 and depending on the art and the design, the color, the matching of colors, et cetera, uh, it, it demonstrates the beauty of the woman when it takes something basic and make it into all of these beautiful colors, all of these beautiful designs. So the concept of the garment 19 came from the number 19 that is coded in the Holy Quran, a linear pattern 
but made so beautiful by the infinite circle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding through creativity to bring all these beautiful designs out of one simple pattern. 15 minutes, 15 minutes left, and I want to get the, these questions in. So we'll go, Sister Beverly, I want to ask you this question about, if you can briefly talk about how Mother Tanetta, the strong connection uh, to Egypt and Africa and her study of ancient Egypt and how, how's that, the meaning of that, what that means, the meaning of that to us today? That is a loaded question, Brother Willie, and I hope I will not take the next seven hours to answer that question. I'll try to be very, very brief. Mm -hmm. uh, I refer to Mother Tanetta Muhammad from her presentation on the brain in the tent system. It was given around 1998 at Moss Mariam. It was recorded, and she explained why the, the Great Pyramid, the largest pyramid of all, um, why the the missing capstone on the top was never made. They, they didn't even make it. Instead, that top of the Great Pyramid was left untouched to represent a Christ that would be coming at a later time after you and I went through our journey in the underworld to be resurrected under a very mysterious star that the Egyptians um, noted in their hieroglyphics called America. And you would find this ancient people made new and resurrected in the West under this code of, Mer of America. So this is why when you go into the, the pyramid in that center pyramid in the king's chamber, the sarcophagus there is empty. It doesn't have a pharaoh, no pharaoh. The pharaohs were forbidden to even be buried there because it has been left that way in anticipation of an upcoming Christ and an upcoming people that would be loaned to that Christ. Now, Mother Tynetta taught this using numbers because when you tie numbers into grammar, when you use numbers with letters, then it solidifies it even more. And it gives you more intelligence about what it is you are reading. She said that if you count the course, number of courses, which are blocks, rows of blocks, from the empty sarcophagus for the expected Christ that would come in the millennium up to the edge where the missing capstone was not put, you come up with 153 of those blocks. But once that Christ appears and that missing capstone, which is a living man, presents himself as the new Christ, that 153 turns to 154, which is the total number of questions and answers in our Supreme Wisdom book. Now, she said that the Bible bears witness to this also in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter, the 19th verse. Now, let me quote it for you. It reads, in that day, there will be an altar made unto that Lord in the midst of Egypt. And that's in Isaiah, the 19th chapter, the 19th verse. This is the mathematical theology of Mother Tynetta's uh, teachings to us, which is a supplemental course to the teachings of the messenger and the guidance of the minister. The Holy Quran says it this way, and certainly we have made the word to have many connections for their sake so that they may remain mindful. Mother teaches this, the mathematical structure of our language with numbers and letters is coded to invite us as students into a system of codes that will wake us up and simply be using our reasoning to establish the truth of who we really are. Thank you. I know that was a lot and that's a, we can talk about that, that, that civilization in itself is still being studied. So I thank you for summarizing it in that manner. So I'll have this next question. We'll go with uh, Sister Sharice and then we'll come close out with a question to you, Sister Beverly, yeah, talking about you, the Million Man March and Mother Tanetta's book about that. So, Sister Sharice, what have you found as some of the most important aspects of Mother Tanetta's research and study from your your perceptions perspective? The formula by which she's given us, the formula by which we can study. Um, 
the basis of all of what Mother Tynetta studies and has given in her writings is the Supreme Wisdom book. You cannot get away from this base. We were instructed to learn this material. We have to recite it, the, the student enrollment before we receive our X, and we are to copy the letters or the copy the answers of Minister Elijah Muhammad that we may see the light and walk therein. That whole book, we got to walk that book. And in order to do that, we must study. So all of what Mother Tynetta has done and her travels and her writings, it's all contained in the Supreme Wisdom book. There's no way of escaping that. And I think that to me personally is my guide through it in order to, to immerse my mind and, and spirit in that book to be able to continue the study and how Allah would reveal in the word uh, one of the things Mother Tainetta did did in terms of her readings was reading the Quran once a week, the entire Quran from cover to cover in a week's time. Now, how much, you know, the, I think the minister talked about um, in the swan song, talking about the, um, the ability to receive revelation, being able to read into what Allah is instructing us in the Quran, but receiving that in real time. Um, that, those are my words, I'm not quoting the minister. But as, as believers, when we're studying this teaching, this great teaching, and as we continue to, in the transformation of our minds, the ability to bring it back to the, the lessons, is very paramount. And I think for us as believers, this is the light that we are going to be, have to trim and you know keep ourselves on the path until the minister's return. And so for us as believers, all of what we have been given and taught since his rebuilding, his obedience to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we're standing on, the, on his shoulders in order to make it to the other side. So in the minister's obedience, in Mother Tynetta's obedience to her husband, we are being given all of what we need to make it so that when the minister returns, we will be found awaiting as he, as, as you know, the five foolish virgins versus the five wise virgins. So again, the oil in our lamps is this teaching to be able to trim those lamps and ride out what's coming so that when he returns, he will find us battle tested, but still in a state that he would recognize us wow. and would be able to be received. Wow, beautiful. And I thank you for uh, sharing that and even emphasizing the importance of us not continuing to read the lessons in, as a foundation. And that that is that is beautiful. And you you shared something earlier. You talked about the Million Man March, and this really leads to this this last question that we have. And we'll go to our sister sister Beverly. Can you talk about what you learned about Mother Tanetta's research on the historic Million Man March? Oh yes, you know Mother Tanetta, in pre preparation for the Million Man March, formed a team of sisters to prepare intel on the United States Capitol in the National Mall. And some of those on the team is attorney Ruth Muhammad, sister Rashida Muhammad, sister Lima Muhammad. And she compiled her information in a book that you just showed, the orange book. And it's, it's titled The Million Man March. Some of the information published by her was featured the next day or two in the Washington Post. You also had a picture, if you can bring it back up, of Mother Tynetta sitting between two sisters, and I'm one of those sisters. There it is. That particular picture was taken at the George Washington Museum, a sonic museum. And this is where Mother Tynetta, with her delegation, as Sister Fatima Muhammad, Sister Alberta Muhammad's daughter, and myself and Mother Tynetta. And when we were at the Masonic Museum, there was so much that they shared with us. That particular picture, they asked Mother, invited her into a private library at the Masonic Museum.
And she chose me and Sister Fatima to go with her. And we said, we, our mother said, we're here to study uh, for the Million Man March, get research for the Million Man March. And they took us in a private area in the library and the director of the library began to bring rare books to us. Books that were not on the shelves for your everyday visitor. There were also some other things that we did in the museum that are nothing less than miraculous. That book, however, the Million Man March book that Mother Tynetta published, I don't know if it's still in publication or if it's still available, but if you uh, purchase the books that Brother Tim and I did, um, the, Brother Tim's book, the memoir, has extensive uh, research that we compiled in the um, in our books, an abundant amount of information on her research that we tried to uh, to document, and some very key points about the Million Man March and the minister's speech that were inspired by Mother Tynetta Muhammad can be found in that book. So if you cannot get the Million Man March book, certainly we have tried to preserve some of that in our own writings. Um, Mother Tynetta Muhammad's research on the Million Man March was phenomenal and even today is still phenomenal. Um, one little quick thing, Sister um, Anita Muhammad, Brother Kenneth's wife and I, we all went to the beach and she and I were walking. I had on a Million Man March um, t-shirt and um, this gentleman of Caucasian persuasion came up to us and he just kept telling us, you know, that was the greatest movement in America. We are so proud, but we want to hear more from you. And that just bears witness of the what they have learned, not just from the minister and what Allah is guiding him to do, which is so powerful, but also the study of what this time means and the, and what must be done in this time from Mother Tanetta Muhammad. It is, it is, whew, it's a miracle that we got through all of that. Huh? And is and brothers and sisters, we haven't even scratched the surface for what these sisters, <laughs> what these sisters doing. They did a, a very good job and a very challenging job to wow. share what they shared within these time constraints. But I thank you, as you can see, that many of the people who are in the chat room, they are appreciative of what you all shared to help us gain a greater understanding of the scholarship, the culture revolution, and the travels. And thanks to Brother Jamil, we got a, even got a few uh, stories about the humor and in regards to the fashion. But thank you all, sisters, and we pray that Allah continues to bless you all. And for those who are watching this show, inshallah, we're going to have each of these sisters back to give their give more of their own personal testimony. They gave some of it starting off. And just the similarities, I, I shared this with them. And I'll say this, that I can really see from listening to what you all said about how you came to Islam and just what you all shared, that the relationship that you have with Mother Tanetta Muhammad and what you were doing to help was not by accident. You were prepared and you were selected. So may Allah continue to bless you all on this on this Mother's Day thank celebration you. that we're having. And thank you all for Brother all really? that you said. Go ahead, Sister Brother Shereen. Really? Yeah. Go ahead, Sister Beverly. Yes, would you allow me please to give the address where to order the books from that Brother Tim and I have? Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Please send your request for the books to Our Two Books. That's O-U-R, the number two, B-O-K-S, at yahoo.com. And we will be more than happy. We tried to put as much history and information in the books that it would be just not a plain story, but enrichment as well. And we support you. Uh, we thank you for your love and your support. Our Two Books at yahoo.com. At yahoo.com and go ahead uh sister Sharice. wait you're on mute I'm sorry. yes you thank you <laughs> i just wanted to offer this happy mother's day to mother khadija farrakhan from all of us here we want to yes. wish 
Israel and the greetings of Assalamu alaikum and happy Mother's Day, Mother Khadija Farrakhan. We're sending you big hugs and love. And again, to all of our we mothers. We love you. Love you. Well, thanks, Salam. And thank you all. And for those who are watching, make sure you share this, this, this interview. Make sure you send it to different people. And we thank you all for tuning in to another broadcast of I Have a Testimony. I'm your host, Brother Willie Muhammad with NNV Network. Peace. Be a part of the force that powers truth in journalism. Your support helps us to highlight solutions for a brighter tomorrow. Go to nnvnews.com slash donate. Now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. Please make sure you leave your comments and questions in the comment section below. Follow us on Facebook, National Network View, and make sure uh, to check us out on Twitter as well, National Network View. This is Sergio Gutierrez with National Network View, signing off.